Hello YouTube, I fix it all here. Team I fix it all. Of course I'm zoomed in. Uh, seed bank. This is just an old antique file cabinet drawer that I use um, to store seed. And doesn't quite match up right. But that's what the little paint stirrer is for to keep the envelopes down so it'll close but um, here's some empty packets that were emptied out that I can repurpose for new seed but do you have a seed bank do you have a way to grow food around where I live meat's not that difficult Unless they contaminate it. So right now I'm working on tomato seed. And I thought I would take you on a little trip through what I got to go through to get to tomato seeds. Hang tight. So I'm back in the house here. And I've got one jar of tomatoes already sorted and what have you. But... Um, I've got a piece of paper here that says those are Roma. Here's my Roma Mater seeds. Not too many. Uh, I did a big old bunch of them just now, but that'll be at the end of the video. Let's go get these cleaned up and prepped. My workstation's going to be out on top of the Bronco. Reason being is because I need access to continuous water. I'm wearing you guys around my neck right now on a stupid cell phone holder. So, let me set my mater's air. That's Roma. Need the spoon. And this is Lincoln. And I've already cleaned up some Lincoln here. Dang it. And of course, recycling old printer paper. Step one is I'm going to put my tea on my piece of paper so I don't lose it. Um, I've got a homemade screen here piece of AC electrical wire, two gauge aluminum with a couple of zip ties. It's basically just a screen filter. I'm going to get those and excuse the bounciness. I'm going to crack the water till it's barely running. That's about good enough right there for what I need to do. Pour the seed out. Actually add some water to make sure all the seed cooperates. Check and make sure everybody transported. Set my glass down. And I'm just going to Find a spot that's comfortable and massage these seeds and get that pulp to pass through the screen. Work it in like that. Not many seed. Roma is generally a tomato that has a lot of pulp. It's good for your spaghetti sauces and what have you. All right, I'm all. I'm going to pick, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to pick through and get rid of the chunks of pulp that aren't pass, that is not passing through the screen. That's kind of time consuming, but hang tight. I'll be right back. Might as well include you on a little bit of the fun to show you what you got to do. 
trying to sort through, get rid of stuff that doesn't look like a seed. I'll flick that. Not too difficult. It's actually kind of relaxing. Get off the truck. I'm gonna rinse these off one more time. Let's see what happens. Pretty clean so far. That didn't take as long as I thought. I cracked that water just right or else I'm gonna blast my seeds off the screen. Got a bee trying to pay a visit to us. Oh, come on. There we go. What I'm trying to do is wash them off as thoroughly as possible because when you dry these out, you don't want, around the seed themselves, there's these, it's like a, uh, like a gelatin membrane around the seed. I don't know what purpose that serves in nature other than perhaps maybe it preserves it, allows it to make it through the winter, not real sure. These will be Roma seeds that I get to um, either number one, designate as 2023, or I can add them to my existing Roma from 2022. I will decide later. Um, but when you get your seeds together, I think these were, yeah, Roma. These were Roma. Um, these were from three Roma. That's how few seeds they have. Roma are pretty decent in size. You can see straight ahead. There's some Roma hanging. They're pear tomato, perhaps. Google it. You'll see what I'm talking about. But when you collect your seeds up, even if you have to wait for the fruit to ripen, you want to at least collect seed from a minimum of three of the same kind of veggie. What you're doing is ensuring your genetics is strong enough to be passed down and handed down to the next generation the more the merrier you know if you had five tomatoes you can quarter up and fish all the seed out of and then you cook those tomatoes up as you please but you saved them out of five or six or ten or twenty um, what that really means is you have enough seed to share with others later all right let's see Next step is, where'd my jar go? Oh, there it is, yeah. I'm gonna scoop these up with a spoon and get them in a jar. Or maybe I can just scrape them into the jar. Yeah, that's working. Don't blow away paper. I gotta remember this is Roma. I know that sounds kind of hokey, but I'm about ready to lose my jar. That might be okay. Um, when you're dealing with different, <laughs> I'm dealing with like five different types of tomatoes today. So, I can't get my wires crossed. Come on. Every single seed counts. Remember, every seed counts. If you drop one, stop what you're doing, try to find it. It might have been the one seed. All right, so that's cleared. Now we're going to call that done. We're going to add water now 
to the seeds and we're going to perform a viability test. Whoops. Okay, we got a lot of seeds flying around in there. There's also a lot of pulp. So what I'm going to do is let the uh, let the stirring around of everything have its effect and observe who's already floating because generally speaking oops I got a seed up there that's stuck it might actually be a good seed uh, generally speaking if a seed floats it's deemed as no good I've wa I remember as a kid we would have probably five or six hundred seed and maybe a couple of dozen floated and that was it but my objective here is I want to I'm going to stir this up once more because I want to get seed on the go and pulp on the go but as I notice most of the seeds start to sink I'm able to get rid of the top layer. The top layer might actually be a few, oops. Top layer might actually be a few seeds. It might not, but I'm getting rid of pulp as I pour. And you can see that everything that was floating is going to be mostly pulp or non-viable seed and all my guys that sunk are down there. So I just filtered out a bunch of possibly bad seed and a, a huge amount of pulp. When you lay out your seed, you don't want any of that pulp because it will mold. And it will uh, create an active environment of mold that you don't want on your seeds and it'll, it'll kill them. So that's how I just now... Uh, sorted through seed and the glass is fogging up because it's pretty warm outside you can see a couple deciding whether or not they want to float or not maybe you can maybe you can't don't have a lot of floaters now I have a, a few chunks of pulp in the jar so I'm gonna pour one more time to get rid of pulp and I'm observing the seed to make sure I don't lose any seed basically it's just like panning for gold you wanna pour off all the refuse that's floating and try to keep the seed Oh boy, of course we had technical difficulties. It's funny how that happens. So, this is the Roma seed. And what I'm doing is I'm checking to see who decided to come up to the top. And there are a few. I'll let this set for a little while more. Matter of fact, I'm going to stir the pot, so to speak. Because now I'm in a situation where I'm ready to make a determination on uh, how long I'm going to let this. I think I'll let this. Well, I can. <clears throat> Never mind. I'm going to move this next to the other seed. Sorry about the bouncing. that right there now let's take a look at this this is the odd thing about float testing <sighs> it's been a long time since I've done any float testing this is Lincoln tomatoes and I'm not sure what's happening here but it seems like the longer these tomatoes sit the more floaters you get. It's a lot of waste. So, 
so honestly I remember as a kid we would we would have and this is like in the 70s and in 80s we'd have a bunch of seed at the bottom two three four hundred seed and then you'd have um, maybe three or four dozen at top this seems more substantial I'm not real sure I'm going to let these seed soak for a little while more and if all of them come to the top um, I'm going to abandon float testing seed because I didn't have any trouble with viability of tomato seeds from the ones last year and I know a lot of people out there tell you to float test I'm just concerned that is this a a result of genetically engineered seeds could it be possible that I have that many seeds that are just crap so this one here that I just sat down is starting to release a few more coming up see, I got a damaged finger uh, see you got some trying to decide to go up now I'll check back on these seeds here in a few minutes and we will check back in with you and I'll uh, show you what happened because I don't think I'm going to throw these seeds out if everybody floats I just don't know what's going on with seed nowadays I don't know why this is happening. I had a whole bunch of seed that all of it ended up floating a couple of days ago. I just threw them out. I said, screw it. Let's start from scratch and let me do this in the way that I remember doing as a kid. Just clean them up good. And whoever floats, they get tossed. But I'm telling you right now, it looks like every one of these seeds are just itching to float. I'm going to pause this and uh, be right back. All right, I'm back. This took uh, several hours. The seeds have been um, soaking in these jars for quite a while. The end of this video is going to be kind of surprising in a way because... <sighs> Remember earlier when I said every seed counts so do your own research but you'll find out that maybe if it floats it'll germinate and maybe it won't but really that's what this all boils down to if I were to eyeball my seed right now here's Roma I've got the paper labeled look another one just ascended Here's another one on the way up. I can stir them and instigate a few more. I could probably let this sit. And some will sink, some will rise. At the end of the day, there's real data points out there that say if it floats, there's possibly a 70% germination rate. There's another one going up. So, the moral of this story is, if you have seed, save them all. Keep them. Don't throw them away. We'll stir these up. Get them going crazy again. Stir these up. It's only been like an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, one of the things that I was contending with was the fogging of the glass. But I'm going to zoom in a little bit. This is kind of an important topic because it's a morale booster for people who want to actually do gardening, but they don't have knowledge about things. So really the fundamental here is collect your seed from more than one source, kind of like you get your news. And 
make sure it's the right species. Let's just say you're doing Roma tomatoes and have four or five Romas. Four or five Lincolns. I ended up with a hybrid last year of cherry tomatoes that mixed with Roma. Remember we said Roma are very pulpy. Uh, not a lot of juice. But as a trade-off, they have less seed. Well, cherry tomatoes are famous for being those little red tomatoes that just so juicy. But we ended up with a particular breed that crossed over with Roma. And now I have two breeds of cherry called, and I've dubbed them as cherry pulpy. And then the other ones are cherry juicy. Um, I'm saving all these seeds. Um, but this is, now that I'm done with this test, I, the moral of this story is the water test, I don't know, it sucks. Because it's just not intuitive. What The only way you can really do this is to pick out 10 seeds and start them. And then you do your calculus on germination rate of your seeds you have in storage. That's the only way. So now I got to get these out of the jar and get them staged on these papers. So let's have at it. I'm going to, uh, I need to wait for this while the jar is off of it. So that's what the T is for. Let's start with beef steak. Set that right there. And this is really simple. I don't want to be zoomed in while I do this. Hang on. By the way, this is a culmination of like four videos. I have to splice them now. I hate splicing videos together, but I used, I use Windows Movie Maker. Um, here we go. Pour the seeds out. And then make sure everybody's out of the jar, which they are. And then we put the... Put the seed on the paper. If I can find that optimum location where I can scrape these the easiest. There we go. All right, there's one. Everybody's off of there. Now I'm just going to smear them out, flatten them, basically. They've still got that gelatin substance on them because that's just the way tomato seeds roll. Get them spread out decently. I'll get the rest of them. Hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Got these guys uh, broken down and put out on these sheets of paper. The reason why I choose paper, not paper towels, because it's a lot easier to scrape them off of paper. Paper towel is fibrous, and it has a tendency to grab a hold of that gelatin structure that's on the tomato seed. And... Um, well, I just think that I can, I use a razor knife to scrape them off or, but how do I dry them? You ever got in your car when it's on a summer day? My old pickup truck. So I'm just going to set that right there. I'm going to move all four of those in the truck. Hang tight. So everybody's in here tucked in nicely. Uh, sun comes up from that way. And it sets that way. Uh, currently the Bronco's parked where it's in full sun. We've been using it to clear out some trees with my battery-powered chainsaw back here, me and the wife, and a cable. 
and we got one tree stuck. But uh, that gave us the area to clear out and add sunlight to the garden in the morning, which is about an additional hour and a half. And then in a previous video, uh, we talked about how I cut a few trees down to V out right here so that I have sunshine on the garden later in the evening. All in, I added about two and a half hours of sunlight to the garden by doing those two simple things. Clear the east sky clear the west sky and uh, as far as the tomato seeds go tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon I'll pull them out and I will bring them into the garage and let them finish completely drying out I've got seeds on paper plates in the garage right now that I have to contend with and get them in packages hang tight now another thing you can do for seed, if you want to get them drying out quicker, you can uh, pop the trunk and put them in your trunk. What you're trying to do is introduce a drying environment similar to that of dehydration, but not cook all the good things out of the seed that will prevent them from germinating all right so where the hell did my seed go oh yeah i set them up here because in the garage i don't want mice to come along so what do we have here We have, move, this is called squash, yellow, crook neck, bumpy, okay, and then this is zucchini, these are all dried out, I'm ready to go. And let me turn on some better light here. Boom. That thing always pops. It's a homemade switch I put on there. But what I'll do is find something. Uh, I could just use this. Right here. And I'll just go along and loosen guys up. That's all you need to do is just gently loosen them because they'll get stuck when they dry. And uh, I'm not liking the way this zucchini seed has turned out. Um, I didn't like it when it was drying either because it looked significantly flat. I'm not real sure what's up with that. I couldn't have over dried it. Take a look at that. There's zucchini. This is a yellow crookneck squash that's ready to go. Again, significantly dry. Now, something I've never learned is can you, is there a such thing as over dry? I just don't know. But I know these are really, really dried out seed. I'll get these into a container and get them stored back and they'll have their own home in my seed bank right here and I'll be ready for next year. See ya.